Hi, this is Tracy from Lavinia Stamps and today I'm going to be demonstrating how to use some of the alcohol inks and the Upo paper. So um, we're selling two sets of inks at the moment, one a warm set and one cool set. That's what I've named them. Um, I've tried a number of different inks together, different colours, and I just thought these sets worked really nicely together. And it might help you guys, because I know sometimes we all struggle with knowing what colours to put with what. So, we'll be using both of those sets today. Um, the other thing we're going to be using is the Yupo paper. Um, this is like a, a, a synthetic plastic uh, paper um, which works fantastically well with the uh, alcohol inks. Um, it just creates some amazing effects as you will see. We're also using our blending solution. This again is a really nice product that works well with the inks. It takes the colour out. Uh, but also blends them. Um, hard to explain but I'll show you again. We'll be using our blending tool as well um, and uh, one of the problems people have actually with stamping onto the Yepo paper is because it's a very shiny surface and um, the print doesn't come out very well. Now we've all struggled with this but I've found one of the best ways you can do it is by using your anti-static bag. So when you finish your design, just wipe it over. And then also when we're stamping our stamps, we just place your stamp down on your block. Uh, I picked this uh, little product up from Hobbycraft, I think it was. And it's a little bit of fine sandpaper. Now if you just take that over the top, very gently, just rub that over the top of your stamp. Not every single time, um, but when you feel like you're not getting a very good impression, this just brings it back to life. It takes, uh, rid gets rid of all the um, ink, the previous ink, anything that's clogged the stamp up, and gives it a bit of a rough uh, surface so that it can grab hold of the ink this making it much easier uh, to stamp onto the Yepo card, which I will show you again. Uh, you'll never get the perfect print on Yepo card. Now, all I do is simply get a fine uh, paintbrush using archival ink, because again, I've tried a number of different inks on Yepo card. This is definitely the best one I've come across. And when it comes to touching it up, just pick up a bit of ink uh, from your ink pad and just touch your stamp up. And that's all there is to it. It does give a really nice fine detailed stamp, but there's always going to be an area, usually in the centre, that it misses. And it would seem a shame to throw your card away and start all over again when all you need is a fine paintbrush, touch it up and it's done. I'm going to start at making the card now. I'm just going to check I've got all my tools around me, so I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so here we go. We're going to start with the um, cool set of inks. Uh, so this is our sunshine yellow. So just simply take that across the Yupo card using our blending tool and a new lint and we're just going to blend that first colour in to the card spreading it evenly over the surface okay so the ink dries quite quick um, obviously the more ink you put onto it the longer it's going to take to dry. Um, if the ink is wet 
when you do drop the ink on it disperses quite well but if you're dropping the ink on when the card is quite dry it's less likely to disperse quite as wide and um, that's something that you'll you know you'll learn as you experiment yourselves okay so using the citrus now I'm just going to dot this around the edge of the card and you can see here how it's starting to spread and this is when it creates its gorgeous patterns the thing is about alcohol inks I've found um, is to keep working with them don't discard it if you're not happy just keep working with it the blending solution uh, which I will be showing you, it actually erases the colour um, which is great for any areas that you're not overly happy with okay so I'm just going to dab that now with the lint and just blend any areas that I want to blend you can, you can either blend or you can just leave the colours do their own thing. Okay, so moving on, we'll go to our uh, purple twilight, and again, we're just going to dot a few colours around. Let the ink work its magic and create these wonderful patterns. And then moving on to denim. and stream one of my favourite colours okay so at this point, um, I'm going to change my lint to a clean one and I'm going to apply the blending solution. And I'll show you what I mean now by this uh, actually blending the colours together but sort of erasing them, uh, hard to explain, but you, you almost get like a crackle effect with it. You can see there how it's just pulling the colour out, but I just think it's an amazing effect and you can just keep on working with it. In fact it's hard to know when to stop sometimes. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my citrus now and I'm going to put a little bit more of this over the top. It's about just keep on playing with it, experimenting, and you'll be amazed at what you actually get out of it.
try not to be too controlling, let the colours work themselves. But what, what a lovely, lovely effect. I just love it, as you can tell. Okay, so we're at this stage now where I'm going to leave that to dry for a bit now and then I'm going to put a moon in and I'll show you how to do that shortly. Okay, so this is dry now. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do the moon or the sun. All I've done is uh, just cut a hole um, in some paper just to mask that area off. So placing that down uh, using a bit of good old cotton wool um, and just a little bit of blending solution. Now keeping that firmly pressed down I'm just going to take the colour out of this masked area and that will just leave us um, a slightly paler area. We can we can take as much colour as we want out of that. You can actually take it out till it's completely white. But I wanted to leave a, a slightly yellower colour. Okay, so we're at the stage now where we want to stamp onto the card. So first of all, just take our anti-static and just gently rub that over the top. And then secondly, taking our stamp, and using our little sanding gadget, just give that a little brush down like so. Archive a link. Now you can ink it either way, that way or that way, whatever you prefer. I'm just checking I've got enough ink covering. Okay, so placing that down now, like so, give that a firm press and take off. Now straight away you can see all the little gaps. Don't be horrified by this. They're so easy to just touch up, especially while the ink is actually still wet on the paper. You can just move it around. There we go. It's good as new. It still brings out incredible detail all around the edge. It's usually just the centre that needs touching up. So moving on to our next stamp. We're going to take our other hair. Again, just lightly sand that down. As I say, you don't have to do that every time. And again, we're just checking the coverage of the stamp. And then we'll place our hair down there as well. Giving that a press down, taking off, and then just touching that up in the areas that haven't quite taken. That's just so quick and easy to do, to be honest. There we go. So two perfect images now. Okay, so we want a few flowers around, I think. 
So I'm just going to take our, one of our other stamps here. And then I'll pick up, um, we'll take the red geranium archival, inking up. And we're just going to bob a few flowers around. And we'll just do one here, like so. And all I'm going to do now is finish off with a little verse, just overlapping at the top there. And we'll do it in a colour that blends quite well. This is um, fern green. I don't want anything too bright to take the focus away from the hairs. Okay, so just bob that down. Take that off. And there it is. Okay, so we're going to do another card now um, using the warm tones of the um, alcohol inks. Uh, starting with the butterscotch, I'm just going to take that over and then blend it in using our blending tool and that piece of lint. Make sure we get that whole area covered. And then think about bringing some of our other colours in. So we're bringing in the sunset orange now. And again, just using our blending tool, just going over that. And now we'll use the cranberry. And then bottle. I've tried several different uh, tones of the inks together and just found that these worked really nicely together, uh, which is why I developed the the sets because sometimes we don't know what colours to put with what it just gives you a bit of help okay so the eggplant
and then we shall use our blending solution so using some of the felt that we've used before for the blending solution popping a bit more on and this is where you get those lovely effects where the colours start blending together giving that sort of crackled effect just keep on working with it anything that you're not happy with just put the blending solution over the top and it just erases that area and you can start putting your alcohol, alcohol inks back over the top again so I'm just going to put a little bit more of the blending solution on here now and work with it again just so interesting and so pretty all these different effects that you're getting going on around the card so at any point that you want to start adding a little bit more color if you've taken too much out just again start adding the colors Just keep on playing with it, have fun with it. Don't be frightened to experiment, that's the key. Okay, so I'm going to probably leave it there now, leave that to dry and then decide what we're going to use to stamp onto this sort of area now. The area that I've left blank, that's where we're going to start stamping. Okay, so the card's now dry and uh, we're going to use the anti-static bag just to take that across, just helps for the stamp to bond to the paper um, we're going to be using a tree stamp uh, so we need to just give that a little sand down again and then using the archival ink ink up the trees
make sure that you've completely covered that. And then placing that down, giving that a good press. Taking that off and repeating that again. And I'm just going to put those side by side like so. Another good press down. And then just take that off. Okay, so I don't want the trees floating as they are, so I'm just going to use some of the archival ink again and just pick up a bit of the ink. And just paint that in. There's a few little gaps on the trees that I'm going to touch up. Just to give that more sort of solid feeling on the trees. It's not much that needs doing actually on this one. And that's it really, that just gives you just a really nice effect and um, just grounding those trees off there just finishes it off nicely really. You could always decorate these if you wanted some leaves going on uh, but quite frankly I think that's just a stunning card by itself. Hope you've enjoyed it. Okay, so moving on to our third card now, uh, we're going to go back to our cool colours. So starting with uh, the sunshine yellow again, just take that over your card and then going back to some fresh lint take that over and blend that in Okay, so I'm going to use the citrus now.
and just blend those in. And moving on to stream. Just such an amazing colour. Love this colour. And you don't actually need that much to create your backgrounds. You know, you don't need that much ink on it at all. I think once you get into it, and the more confident you get, this is what I've found, um, the easier it becomes. So, like I say, you know, just keep working with it. Okay, so I'm going to bring in a bit of Pebble Twilight. And going back to the citrus. Okay, so moving back to the alcohol solution now, just putting a little bit of that on the lint as before. And now we're just going to start blending those colours together.
just so pretty. Okay, so I'm going to use a little bit more yellow again. just dab that gently, really gently. Perfect. Okay, so we're going to leave that as it is now, leave that to dry and then once it's dry again we'll pick a stamp to uh, put onto that. So I'll See you in a bit. Okay, so our card's now dry. So going through the same process, take the anti-static bag and just rub that over. And then this time we're going to be stamping with one of our fairies. So again, we're just going to use the sandpaper, just take that over the top, nice and lightly. And then using the archival ink, we're going to ink her up. Make sure she's completely covered. And then placing her down like so. Give that a good press. Taking that off. And again, as you can see, we've got a few areas we need to fill in. But if you also look, the detail does all come out so so well so be patient with it just fill in those little areas you can pick up any fine paintbrush from uh, from any craft shop really or art shop and that will do the job absolutely fine Last little bit now. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So the space at the back is looking a little bit stark. So we're going to stamp a worded um, script on the back. So taking our big acrylic block. Again, I'm just going to give that a little sand down. And then using the archival ink this time, I'm not going to use black, I'm going to use a colour, I'll use green, 
uh, it's a fern green this one and then inking it and then I'm just going to place that down over the top like so give that a press take that off and that's just filled that gap in really nicely okay so we've got a floating fairy again so in order to ground her we're just going to take our brush again and some ink this time I'm taking the cobalt ink cobalt blue and I'm just going to paint in a little bit of a hill there which will just ground her nicely like so I'm happy with that uh, if you wanted to put a few leaves in the corner here we can carry on working with it so taking our stamp middle span down and then we'll pick up our uh, red geranium archival inking up and then we just pop a few of those around which is a really nice colour actually sits well with green okay and do you know what I'm going to finish there I think we've done enough to this to make a really lovely lovely card I hope you've enjoyed it and uh, good luck to those of you who want to have a go of it <laughs>